Hmm. So you guys thought 17,000 kilojoules was pretty impressive. But some of you thought, I bet you you could make more power. What happens if we were to take these natural gas generators and let them run hot? So rather than outputting polluted water, they output steam. So welcome back, my fellow duplicants. Today we're going to take this crazy system to the next level and try to capitalize on all of the heat potential that we have over here on the left side and the right side coming off of these natural gas generators. This actually makes a lot of sense. When we take a look at this system over here, you can see that once it gets too hot, I'm going to run some really cold super coolant through this. And that is going to slow down our production over here. You can actually watch this thing slow down to a crawl when it's trying to keep things from overheating over here. The thing is, we really don't need to protect this stuff because this thing is capable of going up to 275 degrees Celsius because it's made of steel. But you can see, while it's trying to cool down the natural gas generator over here, look, we're not getting any more natural gas out of it. Matter of fact, these pumps are without natural gas right now. So this is going to stall our production. Matter of fact, this thing could potentially be so energy sapping that we stall the system and need to find a way to restart it. So our last flow chart looked like this. And our new flow chart looks like this. So the natural gas generator is going to output steam, which then goes through the steam turbine. And the output of steam turbine is 95 degrees Celsius. Some of it might go back into the chamber, while the rest of it may just go straight into the oil well. So here's how I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to use a steam turbine and I'm going to end up placing it at the top. Now because steam is a relatively heavy gas, I'm actually going to want to swap out the gas we have inside of here. So rather than using a bunch of hydrogen, we're actually just going to use the carbon dioxide that the natural gas generators give off. So I'm just going to use normal gas vents right here, just like that. Using a normal gas vent, we're not going to put too much pressure in here. And once it's overpressured, then the gas will just continue to flow on out. Simple. The next thing I'm going to do is actually just create a little bit of a bump up there for the steam turbine. That way the steam has a spot to go. So boom, there we have it, steam turbine. Now we just gotta plug this bad boy into everything else. All right, so there we have it, one steam turbine and it's plugged into the grid. The question now is what do we do with the water? And that's a pretty big question because these natural gas generators output a certain amount of water, but it isn't a huge amount. You can see right here, the amount that they put out is 67.5 grams a second. So that's not a lot, especially when you consider that a steam turbine will do up to about two kilograms per second. Now I have 19 generators per bank. They don't necessarily run 100% all the time, but it'll give us some sort of idea. So at best, my polluted water output is nearing 1.3 kilograms a second, which is pretty good for you know one side or the other. I mean, that's actually quite a lot of water but it probably won't fully saturate that steam turbine all the time. The other variable is the overall temperature of these natural gas generators. As I mentioned before, we're bringing this liquid loop in to keep the temperature down so that these things don't overheat. And we still want to get the water from here back down here so that it can run right into the oil well. And the other variable is keeping the heat down in this area so that things just don't get too hot, which could be a problem. I think the core function of the steam turbine is to actually cool things down. I did a whole video series of how I, I'm cooling down volcanoes and you can check that out up there. It's pretty informative. And these things actually do delete a lot of heat. They're not the king of kilojoules, but they may be the king of DTUs. So with that in mind, I think the right idea here is to take water and bring it right back down here and run it through the sieve. You can run it through the sieve. It's, if it's clean water, it won't use any sand or anything. It'll just run right past. Um, so we can still you know, manage polluted water, forget polluted water, and we don't have to worry about it. That's pretty nice. You don't have to, you don't have to go around it. But if the temperature gets high enough, what we're going to do is rather than run it back down there, because we're going to have a surplus of water because it outputs more than we have to put in, I'm actually just going to dump that into this chamber here and drop the temperature down because it's going to be outputting at 95 degrees Celsius. But we're going to target a temperature that's near 200 degrees Celsius. So in the end, it looks like this. We got the steam turbine. We got a valve right there that's going to be hooked up to automation. And then right down here, we also have a pump in case we have a bunch of water down there. All of that just leads back to the water sips. Pretty handy. So this is where I have my thermal sensor and it's just keeping track of how hot this environment is inside of here. And what I want to do is allow the heat to build up, right, to a good amount. And then I'm going to activate the steam turbine to start bringing that temperature back down. So I'm essentially going to build up steam and then I'm going to harvest it. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to explore a memory toggle and how it can be very, very useful. How this works is we have an output then we have a set and a reset condition. So this thing is false until the set condition is met. So once that switch turns on, 
that becomes true. We turn that off, stays true. And that doesn't ever ever become false until this one uh, becomes true. And then when that goes false, it doesn't really matter, right? So that's how this is working. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to set this thing to become active if we go above a certain temperature. And then it's going to remain active until we go below a certain temperature. And at that point, and only then, will it turn off. And it will stay off until we go back over that initial temperature. For comparison, on the left side here, I just used the temperature sensor at 190. So when it goes above that, then we'll drop the water back inside of here. So this thing is just designed to be on. Whereas this one is designed to only be on for a given amount of time and then turn off for a long time. So it's going to have a full cycle. We'll get a really good visual difference of, of what's happening. All right, it's been a few cycles here and I'm outputting steam from these natural gas generators now. Look at that, look at that. We got some steam there, we got some steam there. I created this little extra spot right there just to trap other types of gases in case that they kind of find their way in here, like polluted oxygen. You can make that a little bit larger, filter it out if you really wanted to. I still have some polluted water here on the bottom. Once this gets hot enough, then that will all flip over to steam and, and we'll just be done with all of that. All right, I'm seeing my first movement over here. This steam has gotten hot enough to start firing up this steam turbine. However, you can see that it stops there. So it's, it's doing the start and stop thing. The overall temperature throughout this entire thing is not quite hot enough to make everything steam just yet. The stuff on the bottom is at 120. The stuff on top is just about 125 until the steam turbine starts to run. Even though it's just pulling the steam out, uh, the cool gases down here actually come up and drop the temperature again. Oh yeah, look at this thing. It is struggling hard over there. Look at that. Woo. Let's take a look at the reports. How is it doing? Well, I mean, it is making, so it is generating power, but it's certainly not running very smoothly. One, it's not very hot. Two, we're really not building up any significant amount of steam. Okay, so I've got my first results over here. Uh, this thing has actually become active. I've had to give it a couple of wheeze warts in order to stay cool enough. But if we take a look at the liquid here, it's now dripping back down here into the bottom, which should be helping this stay cool. You can see that the amount of water that's moving through that though is not a lot. And it isn't very consistent either. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. So the big question here is that even though this steam turbine is running and it's not necessarily running super fast, uh, is it actually maintaining the temperature? And the answer is yes, it is actually keeping the temperature down. You can see here it went down to 188. And at this point, the liquid is moving off to the left. So yeah, yeah, it's working. It does flick on and off a lot, but it's, it's still putting out the power. Here's what we got going on here. Both of these steam turbines are putting out some pretty big power right now. Let's take a look at what's happening over here. Over here on the left, this thing's kicking out, you know, 787 watts, believe it or not. Although it did just drop down now that I looked at it. The one over here on the right is staying quite steady. Look at that. I mean, that's exactly what I would expect. The one on the left is going to do this number all day long. The one on the right is going to be nice and steady. And because that is not too hot, it's staying right at 800 watts instead of going up to 850 and going above that to become inefficient. All right, so I let this thing run overnight and I was able to generate a pretty interesting report from that. Now, let's talk about these steam turbines because I think this is actually a really, uh, act I think it's really cool. When you start to look at what these steam turbines are doing, not only are they cooling down the natural gas generators to keep them at a reasonable temperature here, we're not using up a lot of the energy that we're using to try to convert our sour gas into methane. So instead of pulling all that energy out of here, we're actually able to maintain it over there and allow for a much tighter control. Matter of fact, when we look at these reports here, you'll see that some of the numbers are a little bit lower than what I was getting in the last video. And I think it just has to do with um, me being able to actually maintain a much more stable system. I'm not sure the last system was ever able to be stable in the first place, and it could have very heavy cycles for many, many cycles and then actually dip down. This thing's crazy. It takes a lot of cycles for it to just even out. I mean, we're talking a lot, and I can't run it very fast either because of all the different gas dynamics. Blah, blah, blah. What am I doing over here? So ultimately the memory toggle switch was the way to go. Um, using it and running the steam turbine on and off actually generated some really weird reports that I really couldn't explain. I think it kind of bugged the game. So that divided by 600 
means that that thing is somehow outputting 1,710 watts. What is happening? Clay, I broke your game again. Sorry. So for the on temperature, I was using 190 degrees Celsius. So once that got that hot, that's when I would turn it on. And that's at the same time I would be dumping the liquid down here inside of the chamber to drop that temperature back down. Because remember the output is at 95 degrees. The reset is set at 185. Matter of fact, you can get this even tighter if you want to, and it may not be a bad idea. Ultimately, this little automation signal right here runs the steam turbine in a very predictable way. Therefore, we get very predictable reports. And we also get the water out of the unit and enough water in the unit to keep it cool. So it really just manages itself. So I think that's a pretty decent case for if you have a lot of natural gas generators and you want them to run a little bit hotter and get some of that energy back out of it, then this might be a great way to go. Not only that, we're not using up filtration medium because the water that's going in just flows right through. It doesn't get filtered and we're not using that sand or that regolith up in this water sieve. One last thing I did here is that you can see that the natural gas that's coming out of this is up there at 230 degrees Celsius. I ended up using radiant pipes over here to dump a lot of that heat into this steam and uh, carbon dioxide environment over here. That actually works pretty good to bump the temperature up more frequently. So if we take a look at the reports here, what we'll see in the previous cycle is that we were able to get 334 kilojoules out of that one. I think if we go back, we'll get another 350 kilojoules. Uh, 440, you know, 223, it kind of does go up and down, you know, and there's another 430 right there. It's not a huge amount of power, but what we are getting out of this is a much more stable control of these natural gas generators. If we take a look at the reports over here, you can see just how stable the output of this entire plant is, albeit a little bit lower than the 17,000 kilojoules I thought I was able to get out of it. So we're getting a very consistent, I should say 12,000 out of those natural gas generators with a little bit extra from the other generators that I'm using. And therefore you can see the net down here being right around 8,000 kilojoules. And then something happened here, which I think is I set this number a little bit too low and therefore things cooled down eventually over enough time and then started to stall out. So there you have it. I think the steam turbine for a setup like this is a really good idea. If you got some other ideas for me, maybe leave them down there in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about this video. And another video you might be interested in is how I'm using these steam turbines to cool down volcanoes to get that refined metal out. Thanks for watching. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider that subscribe button. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.